Shalom. Let's start by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahabra Kakwadash in Hebrew. That's Yahweh, the name of our Almighty Heavenly Father, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and also the Holy Spirit, which is a Rakakadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of great millstone for teaching us this truth. Honor to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and do to, to freedom to do so. And also honor to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who's returning back to you, how about Shimmy, how we shy during these final moments so that he can have mercy on us in this time of judgment. Now I got a clip we're going to play about this woman that's about to speak and women like her is who the Lord is coming to destroy. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But women with this kind of mindset ain't fit for the kingdom of heaven. They're not going to make it through Jacob's trouble. So the Lord is about to give all women like her a hard reality check. And that's death by pain, a grievous death. Because she think she's rebelling against a man, but she's actually rebelling against Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Now, let's hear her speak real quick. So I've said this before, but I guess I need to say it again. No, I don't believe in submitting to a man. <laughs> Can you imagine? And why you ask? So check this out. Number one, I don't submit because I'm not submissive. Number two, I have never met a man that I felt was superior to me. So <laughs> why would I submit? <laughs> Three, it is not the way of my ancestors. I am a traditionalist, and traditionally we were not patriarchal, and we did not submit to the man. And fourth, and most importantly, I literally gave you life. Why would I submit to you? <laughs> Make it make sense, and it just don't. Not now, not tomorrow, not never, okay? I hope that clears it up for you. All right, so y'all heard her, and we know, we can imagine the kind of headache she brings to the men that she come across. Now, why did the woman feel the need to make this video? To say she's not submissive to a man, she hasn't met a man yet that's superior to her? It's because of the scriptures, because the scriptures say that the man was superior to the woman, that the man is the head of the woman, is supposed to rule over her. So Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai set that up. We didn't set that up. So her making this video, she's actually directing it at the scriptures because that's the only text that set that order. So again, she's not coming after us. She's coming after the scriptures and the author is Yahweh Shai. And when she says that she hasn't met a man that was superior to her, her talking down on the man also includes the man of the Lord now also includes the Yahweh Shai. So if Yahweh Shai was here in the flesh, she wouldn't submit to him either. When he does come back, theoretically, she's saying she wouldn't submit to him either. But that's why the scriptures say, every eye should see him and everybody should bow and weep and wail. So she just talking out the side of her neck. So the whole reason for her making this video again it was aimed at the scriptures. So she said, first reason she won't submit is she not submissive. Hey, that's all cool. When all hell break loose, she not gonna have no choice but to be submissive as she want her and her children to be protected and to eat. Also, she said, number two is she hasn't met a man. She hasn't met a man that was superior to her in order for her to submit. So she says she, she's never met a man she was superior to. But I got a question. Can she bench press 200 pounds? Can she run faster than a man? Nope. Don't she bleed once a month for a week? And then during that week, she emotionally unstable. She can't make important decisions. Her rational thinking is off. Her body is affected. She's weakened, sort of crippled in a way. So how is she superior to a man? And then not only that, she says that she gave birth to the man. Well, how does that make you superior? 
let's sit Genesis 3 and 16. Until the moment he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. So yeah, women go through a bunch of sorrow to bring forth a child. They got to sacrifice their bodies for 10 months. And then even after that childbirth, their bodies are still out of whack. Not only that, women be emotional, can't make rational decisions. Hormones be all over the place. Not only that, certain women die after childbirth. So even in bringing forth a child, you putting your own life at risk. And that's a curse of Eve for eating the fruit from the serpent, which is the so-called white man. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So yeah, that's another curse of Eve, that the husband is supposed to rule over the woman because of the woman is the reason that her and Adam ate the fruit from the serpent. That shows that women have poor decision-making skills. Now, we're not talking about every woman, but a majority of them that think they got it all figured out. Eve thought she had it all figured out. She was like, if I eat this fruit, I'll be wise like the most high. I know good and evil and I won't die. And her man was nowhere around. She thought she had it all figured out. But Adam should have been there keeping her in check according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high. Now, this don't mean any man can rule over the woman, but a man of the Lord is supposed to rule over you. Now, she also said that she's superior to every man she's met. I'm sure she's not superior to every man. She might have a good job, but I'm sure that there's men that she know that make more than her. Let's say she do got a bomb job. Who's her employer? It's the so-called white man. So how is she superior to him? Who is she going to call as somebody breaks into her house or follows her home? or physically abuse her. She's gonna call the so-called white man. And that's it, our next verse. We gonna hit 1 Timothy 2 and 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So Adam eating the fruit, he wasn't in transgression. He, he wasn't deceived, but the woman was deceived. She fell to the temptation, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. She intentionally disobeyed the word of the Lord. And then Adam just kind of got caught up in the crossfire. It was overall to bring down Adam, but the woman was deceived. Because a lot of our women, they don't got the skill of discernment to discern when somebody is honest or somebody is being deceitful. To discern that somebody is a good person or if they is a bad person. Women to say you got to see the good in everybody or everybody has good in them or to the woman they think every man is cool or friendly that's how the woman got deceived by the serpent that's how our women is deceived by the serpent today so just like Eve was deceived our women is still being deceived and this is a perfect example right here by the stuff she's saying now let's let this play again before we continue with the scriptures so I've said this before, but I guess I need to say it again. No, I don't believe in submitting to a man. <laughs> Can you imagine? And why you ask? So check this out. Number one, I don't submit because I'm not submissive. Number two, I have never met a man that I felt was superior to me. So <laughs> why would I submit? Three, it is not the way of my ancestors. I am a traditionalist, and traditionally we were not patriarchal, and we did not submit to the man. And fourth, and most importantly, I literally gave you life. So, yeah, she said traditionally that they didn't submit to a man. But we see at the top here, wives in biblical times were teenagers given to grown men by their parents like pieces of property. Yeah, because that's why the Lord says, thy desire should be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So the worth of a woman was the desire that the man had of that woman. If a man had little desire of a woman, that woman would be worth a little. But the woman whose man 
had a high, a strong desire after her, she was considered a high value woman. So in the biblical times, the worth of a woman was determined by the desire of her husband, of her. So, and women were like property. Don't mean you abusing no man verbally and physically. It's just, that's how it was. And she says she's not submissive, but the Lord is not dealing with the women. That's why Jeremiah 30 and 7, a loss of that day is great so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Not she shall be saved out of it, but he shall be saved out of it. Because the Lord is only saving a man. And women that will receive salvation is going to receive that salvation from the man through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the men, the men of the Lord, the elects, we're going to receive our salvation through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shai. And then each man is going to be of many Yahweh Shai to you women. So your man will be your savior. The man that you know will be your Yahweh Shai. And we could tell through her whole life, she'd been going through doggy men, talking crap about them. And we know that she came across the men of the Lord. She probably like, who is these clowns? They don't got no good jobs. They don't take work seriously. They just study conspiracy theory. So we know she came across the man of the Lord. And guess what? She rejected that man and rejected the testimony. So actually, you rejected Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because what did he say? Those who reject you don't reject you, but they reject him who sent you, you know, through the power and spirit. And not only that, the Lord set it up that way for the man to rule over, over the woman, that the woman, that the man would be the head of the woman. So you're not rebelling against us, you're rebe you rebelling against the Lord. And not only that, when we go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, why is the Lord going to save you women? He's not going to save you directly. He's going to save you through his men. But why is the Lord ultimately going to have mercy? Let's show that. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, but only if they continue in faith and in charity and holiness with sobriety. So women are only going to be saved to bring forth children. That's really the only use that the Lord has for women. So that the nation of Israel and the earth can be repopulated for the kingdom of heaven. Let's read this again. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Meaning you women are going to be saved pretty much to, uh, to have children in the kingdom but only if you continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Sobriety is, means having a clear mind. Your head not filled with BS. This woman ain't sober. She drunk off the philosophies of the white man. Feminism, independent. She thinks she a bad bee. She don't need a man. But hey, that's why we say she not fit for the kingdom. <clears throat> because kingdom, break that word down. What's the first word? King. There's no queens in the nation of Israel. So all that black queen stuff, hey, that's, that's feminism. That's the philosophies of the white man. That's the fruit from the serpent. Ain't no queens in the nation of Israel. There was kings only. That's why it's a kingdom. It's going to be ruled by men. So meaning you're going to have to be submissive. Then when we hit 1 Corinthians 1 and 3, but I will have you know, that the head of every man is Christ. So yeah, Yahweh Shai is the head of us men. He's our savior. And the head of the woman is the man. And the man is the savior of the women. And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. That's the order. First Yahweh, then Yahweh Shai, then the man, then the woman and children. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by that name to take away our reproach. So yes, yeah, seven women, 
they're going to cleave to the man, you know, specifically to the man of the Lord, because they're going to see that the Lord is with us. And this woman, she's going to cleave to a man, but the Lord going to kill her anyway, because the only women that the Lord is going to save are those that continue in the faith and charity with holiness and sobriety. And these women going to say, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Women like to say they wear in the pants. So wearing their own apparel is pretty much saying they're not going to try to take on the role of a man. They're going to stay feminine and stay as a woman. Meaning they're not going to be trying to be the leader, calling the shots, making the important decisions. They're going to let the man do that. But only let us be called by that name. Meaning let us receive mercy and grace from the Lord through you. Because remember, Jacob, Jeremiah 30 and 7, but he shall be saved out of it, but the women will be saved, will have access to the Lord by the men that they fall under. That's what this is talking about, to take away our reproach. So being under the juris, being under the, the, the jurisdiction of certain men of the Lord, that's going to take away your reproach, your shame as a woman not being subjected to the shameful acts that women will be subjected to. And she's going to find out she needs a man for everything. She's going to need a man for food. She's going to be submissive for food, rest, protection, water, clothing, first aid and medical supplies, and even for her children. But that's why we do lessons on videos like this woman here to bring correction to our women that's trying to come back to this truth. An example of how not to be. This is the same woman you're gonna see out there stranded in the middle of all hell breaking loose. No food, 20 men surrounding her, mechanical dogs chasing her. This is a Jezebel spirit. We know what happened to her. And to not be out there alone in the midst of chaos. But I got one more scripture real quick. Let me look that up real quick. So we're going to hit Micah chapter 7 and 10. Then she, that is my enemy. So yeah, she's our enemy because she's purposely talking down the men of her nation. We're not condemning strong women or if women haven't came across a real masculine man and they had to do it on their own by being independent. We're not talking about y'all. But when you feel like you're above the man, when you above the order that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai said, when you make the man your enemy, she's talking about her own man like we the enemy, not realizing that she sided with the serpent, just how Eve sided with the serpent. So being strong and independent, we encourage women, you know, to be to do what they gotta do to survive for her or her children. But when you make us the enemy, that's when you that's when you messed up because you resisting the order. You can't resist his will. That's in the book of Romans. And then also in the book of Romans, you can't uh, you can't resist the order. So Micah 7 to 10, then she that is my enemy. She made herself an enemy to the so-called black man. We know that's who she's talking about. She's not talking about the white man because she knows she's not superior to him. So she made herself an enemy to us. Then she that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is Yahweh thy God? My eyes shall behold her. Now she shall be trodden down as the mire of the streets. So yeah, her, her that is our enemy that talked down on the men of her nation that made herself an enemy to her own men, so she be covered in shame through Jacob's trouble. Cause she gonna find out that she just a woman. She gonna find out she's not superior to a man. She gonna find out she needs a man for everything. Then she that is my enemy shall see it and, shall, and shame shall cover her. She'll see what? She'll see that she's just a woman. She'll see that she does need a man for everything. She'll see that she is helpless and she's not superior, which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? My eyes shall behold her. So we gonna look at women like this and we gonna see them before their judgment. 
So behold, my eyes shall, shall behold her. Now she shall be trotted down as the mire of the streets. And also another reason why shame is going to cover her, because what's another thing she's going to see? She's, she shall see the men of the Lord being raised up with great power and glory. And then when we, in our exalted state, raise up with power, we're going to see this woman, and then we're going to make eye contact. That's going to be her knowing that she should have trusted in her man. She shouldn't have thought that she was superior. She shouldn't have sided with the serpent, and then she's going to receive judgment. So beware of women like this. Then your friend circle, you need to stay from around them because her way is going to rub off on you. But well, women in this truth, you know, continue in the faith. And the Lord will have mercy on you. You can't resist the order or resist his will. It's just set up that way. And then a lot of women, when they come into this truth, then, then they fall in line. They find out it actually is better the way that the Lord set it up. But until next time, Shalom.